FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Faux Monday, the snackable companion show to FOMO Sapiens. We'll be back on Thursday with a brand new episode, of course, of FOMO Sapiens. But until then, happy Faux Monday, best day of the week. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and of course, FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now, the topic of today's Faux Mondays, oh, such a good topic. This is one of my faves, how to embrace your weird W-Y-Y. R-D. We'll talk about weird in a sec, but the context here is this. So my guest on Thursday is Marcus Buckingham. Now, he is quite an interesting guy. He is one of the co-founders and creators of the topic of Skills Finder. I'm sure you've, you've found of Skills Finders. You've heard about it. Maybe you used it at work. So he created that when he worked at Gallup. Now he has his own thing, and he wrote this new book that's called Love and Work that is about sort of figuring out how to reconnect your passions in life with your work. And I think that's a good topic, especially after the pandemic, right? Sort of like we're rethinking everything. And as I thought about that episode, I was thinking about a couple of things I've been reading about. Of course, we all know about the great resignation, this idea that you know everybody's quitting their jobs. And now some people are saying, well, that's not really true, or the trends are a little bit misleading, or it wasn't you know the, the thing it was made out to be. It's really hard to know. I think some people just want to talk about the great resignation all day long and it's just a hot topic for them. Other people are clearly in denial, right? But it is a concept that you hear about all over the place and the numbers can be cut in a million different ways. So let's just, we're not going to solve that one today, but there's another concept that is now like the new great resignation, which I've been hearing a lot about and reading about. It is called quiet quitting, quiet quitting. Raise your hand if you heard of that. Basically, the idea with quiet quitting is it's like people who just lean out. It's sort of like, hey, I hate my job or I'm burned out, so I'm just going to phone it in. I'm just going to sort of do the minimum or maybe a little less self-preservation, self-care. I'm going to hide in my work from home environment. And I'm just not going to be the go-getter that I was because I just don't have anything left to give. So that's a topic that is being bandied about. It'll be interesting to see because what's crazy, though, is if we do have a recession, which who knows at this point, quiet quitting is it doesn't really work, right? If you're, you're, your workplace is cutting people and pulling back, which could very well happen, and you're the quiet quitter, like how does that play out, right? So I'm not sure that that's going to last all that long, but I think what's more important about quiet quitting is that it's talking about the fact that people feel disconnected from their work. They're just like not fired up to do the work. It's understandable, right? I think people's eyes are open about the realities of the companies that they work for, maybe not caring all that much about them. It's the stress. It's the many, many hours and the lack of separation of work and life during the pandemic over the last couple of years. It's just people just have had enough. So that's why quiet quitting is a thing. But what if we went to root causes? What if we said, hey, how do we find people work that they're excited about? How do we reconnect? Like, okay, instead of quiet quitting, why don't you quit and find something you want to do that you can actually live by? You know, you can actually make money because you don't want to do that either. I mean, you hear about people who quit during the great resignation and now they can't afford their rent because all the rents are up. So you don't want to be there. But how do you find something meaningful to you? And so Marcus, in our conversation on Thursday, is going to talk about this concept of embracing your weird, not W-E-I-R-D, W-Y-R-D. What is the weird? It is a concept that comes from a Norse term that captures the notion that each person is born with a distinct spirit. It roughly corresponds to fate or personal destiny. It's really what makes you an individual. Now, uh, first of all, I just, I kind of like that stuff. I think it's interesting. I think it's like the notion that the Norse folk, like hundreds of years ago and more, 
we're thinking about this existential stuff that we worry about now. It's sort of like, okay, we're all human. Love that. They had FOMO, I'm sure too. But I also like the fact that, you know, you think about like, what am I supposed to be? What am I meant to be? Is there something imprinted in me, in my DNA, in my soul that is for me? And I got to find it. I think that's really cool. I like that idea. It's a little metaphysical. It's a little woo-woo, but that's okay. We can do that here in this space, right? We can still be great business people and entrepreneurs and get a little woo-woo together once in a while. So that's what I want to talk about today, getting into the five ways to find your weird. We'll do that right after the break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, so let's get into it. How do you find your weird? Well... You know, I was thinking about this because, you know, your weird isn't like hanging out in your living room, right? So you could do some sort of dip into the world of the occult, you know, (laughs) tarot cards and psychics and stuff like that. I'm not going to recommend that. That's not a place I want to, I don't want to open the doorway to hell. And that's, I don't mean to offend anybody who believes in that stuff or who practices. Like, listen, everybody's got to do what's right for them. But maybe I just watched too many movies in the 1990s about Ouija boards and stuff like that. I, you know, I'm not going to go there. And so that is not my solution, maybe yours, but that is not one of the five we're going to talk about today. So let's get into the five that I do recommend for finding your weird, for finding out like, what are you supposed to be? Who are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to be doing? That's exactly what I want to focus on. And number one is this, reflect on what you don't like about your current situation. Let me tell you, I had this very interesting conversation in the beginning of the pandemic. I remember... Uh, a woman had wanted to talk to me who was a personal coach. She had gone a warden and was really smart and she was a coach and she wanted to talk to me about FOMO stuff. So a mutual friend connected us. And then frankly, she gave me like a free coaching session. And at the time I was doing a lot of work that didn't have some predictability in terms of what I was earning. And so I found that sort of up and down. It's like, yeah, I have money in the bank, but you know, you just want to know sort of like when you start your year or your quarter, like a rough idea of your income. And I didn't have that at the time. And it kind of irritated me. It cultivated like a scarcity mindset and a bunch of other stuff. And so when I was talking with her, I was kind of explaining, she asked me like, what do you like about what you do? What don't you like? And I really zeroed in on that. And it was really helpful for me to enunciate. Like, I love the work I do. I don't like the lack of predictability. That was a problem I could solve. And so as you think through your own situation, if you're like, you know what? I I like the people I work with, but I hate the company culture, or I feel like I'm solving problems that don't really matter, stuff like that. That is, that's the problem to be solved. So by reflecting on what you don't like, you give yourself a direction in which to head in search of the ultimate solution. Number two, consider what would make your situation better than it is now. And that's really tied to number one. So for me, it was like, okay, what I want to do is find ways to create more recurring revenue. Okay, so that was kind of my lodestar. And I started when I would look at a project or an opportunity or look at building something, that was a criteria that I integrated into everything I was doing. So as you think about that, say, for example, you just feel like you're not using skills that you love. Say you're really creative and your job doesn't require any creativity. As you think about what you should be doing in the future and maybe assessing some new opportunities, you got to put that on the list of criteria, right? It's like up there with money and title is, can I be creative in my job? Because I can guarantee you there is something out there that will tap into your creativity. But if you don't put it into what you're optimizing for, you won't find it. You got to make it a priority. Number three, ask yourself questions that help you to pinpoint what you value most. So once you have a general idea of what you want, and that's sort of like what we just talked about, that creativity bit, go deeper. Think about your values, your skills, your relationships, your talents, what fires you up, and then ask yourself some deeper questions. Things like, what do you do that sets you apart from other people in your area or interest? Really, it's like, what is my unique selling proposition? What's my competitive advantage? You got to know that. Once you know that, you know your superpowers. Number two, what experiences have I had in life that have shaped me into the person I am today? You know, where am I coming from? Like, what is my frame of reference? Number three, what do you value most in life? Friends, family, career, money. That helps you optimize for how you're going to spend your time going forward. If you care only about money 
And as I said before, you're looking for creativity. If you don't put that on the list too, then you're going to optimize for money and that may not be the most creative. Maybe it will be, but you got to make sure the list reflects what really matters to you. Number four, what do you want to accomplish by the end of your life? Like you, re you read the obituary, which is sorry to be depressing, but you know, just think about it. The obit, what does it say? You know, what are you going to be remembered for? Is it that you want to be somebody who built something of your own? Do you want to have been part of a team that's incredible? That stuff's really important. And I'll tell you, one thing that I did a long time ago that I thought was a little silly, but actually really worked for me in thinking through this is just close your eyes and just try to imagine yourself on a typical day that you'd actually really enjoy. Like, what are you doing, right? For me, I was trying to get a job in a hedge fund that was my big goal at the time I was in business school. So this was a little activity we did with the head of the recruiting and sort of all that sort of career development department. And I was like, oh, I need to work at a hedge fund. But all the time that I spent in my head thinking about my perfect day, I wasn't sitting at a desk. I was out and about running around doing a million different things. That is not a hedge fund career. So it was a great moment for me to realize like, wow, I'm completely misaligned. There is, you know, my weird is telling me that it's over there and I'm focused on hedge funds. My weird is not at the hedge fund. Next one, list your talents, achievements, and special skills. I think this is really important because as you do this, you start to feel unmoored. You're sort of like, oh, I don't know what I do. What's my place in this world? So writing down what you're good at, having a list of what you've done that's awesome, that sets you apart from the rest, your USP will make you feel more confident in that area where you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and questioning everything. Now, finally, last one, write it down. You gotta write it all down. That is so important because when you do that, you have something that you can reference and you can go deeper. You can sort of explore an area. So just get it on paper. It becomes real to you. This is always my advice for anything in life, but you gotta write stuff down in order to make it happen. All right, so that's how you find your weird. Let's go through it one more time. The five points, reflect on what you don't like about your current situation. Number two, consider what would make it better. Number three, ask yourself questions to pinpoint what really matters to you. Number four, think about all the good things you've done, your achievements and skills and write them down so you can see how great you are on paper. And finally, write it all down. Everything we've been talking about, get it on paper. You'll have it in front of you and you'll have a much better sense of where you're going. All right, everybody, that's how you find your weird. If you have thoughts, questions, or a criticism, I can handle it. Write me at let's connect at patrickmcginnis.com. Find me on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. And of course, on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis. All right, everybody, we'll be back on Thursday with Marcus Buckingham and his weird. But until then, find your weird and take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. 